This is Twit. We didn't know it was going to be called Reunion, right? right? But yeah. but last year at Build, I got to talk to Kevin Gallo, who heads up the developer platform at Microsoft. And at that point, I just was like, so what's going on with UWP? Is it dead? Like, what's going right. on with the store? Is it right. dead? And at that time, he laid out the whole vision for Project Reunion, although we didn't know it was going to be called that. You know, he said, we'd like to get to this place where we just have Windows apps and it's not UWP or Win32. We'd like to bring those two things together, right? We'd like to take elements of the of the platform that are embedded in the US and get them out of the US and make it something so wherever you are whatever kind of app you're developing in whatever language you could use the same set of components and you're not tied to the store and you're not tied to a certain model and it will just work so he he said that was the goal right What's and not here we to are love i know but I, so i interpret it as look you've mm -hmm. got microsoft has all this legacy stuff Win32 Win is terrible. It's a security flaw. It's a reliability yeah, flaw. Yeah, but but problems, there's tens problems. and tens and hundreds of thousands of seats requiring it in the business world. And then this, you know, I think it's we, it's safe to say the UWP Windows Store stuff was kind of terrible. Too. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, failed. it completely it failed. failed. <laughs> completely failed. Yeah. So, but Microsoft doesn't want to kill legacy. What they really want is everybody well, who yeah. wrote Win32 apps and UWP apps to rewrite them for the yeah. modern platform, right? That's their this, real goal. Yeah, I, yeah. This is like I could spend two hours on this, uh, and and well, let's we got all the time in the world. But I <laughs> no, because this is this, this to me this is so central to everything that I care about. So, first of all, when when we say Win32, I think a lot of people misunderstand that. Um, when Microsoft says Win32, they mean it a little more broadly. And Win32 is, I think, what Leo was referring to, which is, you know, this originally C-based API that was terrible, and mm -hmm. it was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and you would write these long-winded windows. It was terrible. And it's a and source so, of yeah. a lot of security flaws, a lot. Oh, yeah, of course. Huge number. Microsoft has been working to build on top of that since the early 1990s, or late 1980s even. I mean... Visual Basic mm -hmm. is something that is on top of classic Visual Basic. It was something on top of Win32. The Microsoft Foundation classes, uh, C++ classes built on top of Win32. In with the, in the .NET world, we had Windows Forms 2001 or two, whatever year that was. And then we had uh, Windows Presentation Foundation 2006, 2007, whatever. Um, the thing that we call UWP today started off as that Metro mobile app environment from Windows 8. It... Microsoft could have taken the Windows Phone environment and brought it inside of Windows, but they chose to make something else that was very similar and not the same and not compatible, and we'll never understand that, but whatever. Um, if you look at Windows development today, if you're a, Windows, a UWP developer, UWP doesn't make a lot of sense because it's a mobile app development environment, and it's designed to run cross-platform within the Microsoft ecosystem. So originally on phone... PC, HoloLens, Xbox, Surface Hub, Windows IoT. And, I don't, you know, it, it kind of creates this least common denominator kind of app. Um, so over the past couple of years, they've tried to improve it for desktop development. And honestly, that's the one part of UWP they kind of got right. Like the, the user experience stuff there is pretty good. So when I was developing that different versions of the app, like the one thing I really like about the UWP stuff is the UI, UX, whatever you want to call that. So <laughs> Project Reunion <laughs> is, yes, it, so it, first there's two aspects to it. First, they're decoupling developer technologies from specific versions of Windows. And you see that in different ways, but in the UWP world, what that means is, say they add like a new control to UWP. You can't just use that anywhere in Windows 10. It's tied to a specific version of Windows 10 or newer. So it's just like the old days. Like if the API was you know, new to Windows 7, you couldn't run it on Vista, you know, although they never should have done stuff like that to begin with, but whatever. So decoupling from version, uh, ending fragmentation, that's a big deal. But they're also decoupling in this, it, to begin with, it's just uh, UX, but decoupling the UWP UX from UWP and making it available to all Developers basically, Win32 developers, meaning literally C++ developers, uh, WinForms developers, WPF developers, and React Native developers will be able to use the UX parts of UWP, which is now called WinUI, starting with 3.0, on their apps. 
but then you know it, it it gets a little complicated from there because UW uh, uh, Project Reunion is a way forward for UWP developers. So you know uh, UWP gets a little stranded in this scenario, but you know today it's the only way you can develop an app on Hololens. So if you want to you know target Hololens, you got to use UWP. Uh, in the future, you'll use pro, you know Project Reunion. That. Oh, so slash they, UWP. it isn't it isn't outdated. That's not the problem. It's well, it's outdated on it's well, it, it didn't succeed on desktop is the problem. And right. desktop mm -hmm. for Microsoft is the mass market, right? They don't have that mobile market. If if phone existed and had succeeded, UWP would have made tons of sense. Um mm -hmm. because that would have been where all the emphasis was and we could have justified right. that. Right. Right. But when right. that thing well, you know, failed, th you know. Yeah, totally, totally. It's because you like we forget sometimes, what does UWP stand for? Universal Windows Platform. The idea there was everything that had the Windows 10 core, you you could write once and it would run mostly across all these platforms. But who did that, right? Like who wrote an app that for Windows desktop that yeah, they wanted well, to run on a HoloLens? Or on any of those platforms. That, that's or the on problem. Xbox, so I, right? <laughs> yeah, in, in other words, you imagine an app, right? So I, I, yeah. I keep talking about this one app I made, but like I'm, okay, I have an app called .NET Pad. Is there yeah. any cause for me to port that to HoloLens or the Xbox? No, of course not. Or, right. or would I have brought it to phone if that was still a thing? No. So UWP is not, you know, it didn't, it, you know, technically it met the requirements of what they were looking for. But realistically speaking, there was just no cause for it. Right. So, here, but here's, now here's the weirdest thing. So Project Reunion, so they've, they've decoupled things, right? Mm -hmm. If you go into Visual Studio, the next version of Visual Studio, and you're running on .NET 5, and you are creating a new app. Now, this is the thing that not a lot of people are going to do this, to be honest. Mm. But mm -hmm. you'll be able to do this. You can choose a WinUI app, and it could be a desktop-type app or a UWP-type app. If it's a, they'll, They could look identical because the, literally the XAML-based UI stuff will be at the same. Uh, I could make a version of .NET Pad on either one of those if I wanted to. But if if you chose the desktop version, it's technically a Win32 app, but mm -hmm. the way you're writing it is using uh, I don't know I want to say it's probably not managed, but it's 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 a C sharp it's a modern app. It's mm. the UI stuff is the same stuff you would have done in UWP, mm -hmm. but without any of the negatives of UWP. The negatives of UWP are that mobile lifecycle management, that your app could be in the background because you're doing something else and it literally turns off, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. really desirable in a low memory mobile environment, <laughs> not super desirable not so on this on desk. Space yeah. space, you know, workstation I'm using now. Did um, you notice, by the way, they, they, a couple places in their blog post about reunion, they called and they said 132, which we're now calling the Windows API. Mm. Uh, no, I didn't see that. That's good. Mm. Yeah, so they're uh, like, let's not call yeah, it yeah, Win32, right. even though it's Win32, right? Let's so call they, they it must, Windows. Yeah. So <laughs> Win32 was a weird name because <laughs> in, on one hand, it's it's tarnished. I think, you know, yeah. people hear Win32 and they get really negative, you know, for the, the reasons Leo right. stated, which are accurate. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the other part of it is they hear Win32 and they think it's like, is this 32-bit something? And Right, you know, old, yeah, old and not modern, right. Yeah, so it's not 32-bit. It it's just no, the it's API. Six, it's actually 64-bit today. Okay. Yeah. This is the, like, in other words, for a little while, they're like, we're gonna, we'll call this thing Win64. But yeah. Win32 but has taken hold as a brand. And, it's just, and, and Win64 <laughs> yeah. implies that Win32 is the 32-bit version of Win64, right. which is not. That's right. We just kind of use it generically, right, to refer it's both. to. It's both. So then I don't mind the renaming legacy, yeah. because that that fixes a misconception I had. Yes, and I imagine right. I'm I not think, alone. I think the Windows API is a good name for that. Yeah. The one thing yeah. they didn't though, say though, and this is why I wanted this is part of the reason I wanted Mary Jo to go over the background mm -hmm. because she said exactly what I hoped she was going to say, which was he said we want to think of these things as Windows apps. Yes. Yep. They never said that <laughs> this week. They didn't use I that know. term. And I think that's the right term for these apps because... I think that that's what they'll do. Yeah. yeah I hope that's... I, I mean... you don't... You need to call reunion's it Reunion's even going to work. It's even going to work on Windows 8.1 at, at some point in time. Like, it's going to go yeah, that far yeah. back, they say. So, so the right, best way to call these group. apps is Windows apps, not Windows 10 apps, right? Although... It's like the... 
the right way to say is, and 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 one day when you can run them on 10x, it'll. You yeah. want to just say Windows apps, right? You don't so, want to say is it 10x? Is it this? Is it that? Yeah, you're right. First of all, and and I, why you would want to run anything on Win 8.1 is beyond me. But um, yeah. my understanding is both both versions of Project Reunion apps, meaning a desktop or UWP variant, will work on Windows 8.1. Mm-hmm. They didn't say this a lot, but coming in 2021, project and probably in .NET 6, um, mm-hmm. Project Reunion apps will also run on all those old t- Windows uh, One Windows targets, Hololens, Xbox, Surface Hub, uh, IoT. Will it? Yeah, it yes. will. Yep. Because I asked about that, and they were they were very wishy washy when I I'm I'm no, like, what about Hololens? Very- I took <laughs> what about, this cause I, I'm like, what about Windows IoT? What about HoloLens? What about Surface Hub? And they're like, meh, meh, meh. So if you, you, go back, <laughs> you can go back and watch the WinUI session, um, uh, which was called. So they did uh, say that. Uh, yeah, they were very explicit about it.